Ryan here with Dark Rangers Inc. And today we are gonna take the mystery out of off-axis guiding and I'm simultaneously going to do a review of the Askar version that was sent out to me recently along with the Askar SCA 260 or Sharpstar, same company. This is the one that I decided to do a video on and kind of go back to my roots of making content that I wish I had available to me when I was looking to get into the hobby or upgrade. I did let my Patreon community pick the last video on the solar eclipse and it absolutely bombed so i still love you guys and if you'd like to join that community please check out the link below but hopefully more than 10 people actually watch this video and get some use out of it now since this is such a simple device i thought i would combine not only the review with a how-to video and i've also tested it with a couple of different cameras so if you're trying to decide which one to use um, with this system hopefully this will be helpful to you and if you're already using an off-axis guider and are maybe looking to upgrade Upgrade or add an additional one, I think this video will also be benefit for you. So if you fit into any one of those categories or you just love tuning into this content, then you're going to want to stay tuned. So really quickly, let's go over what off-axis guiding is and how it differs. With a traditional guiding setup, you have a separate scope that's in parallel with your main scope, and then you have a guide camera that is plugged into it and you get focused this way, and this monitors everything. With an off-axis guider, it's actually even more simple than that. It's really just a collar with a little bit of mirror that reflects the same light that you're getting through your main objective right here, and then it's reflecting it right up into the sensor of your guide camera. Now, the nice thing with that is, is it means you're not only getting the same focal length as your main camera, but it's also exactly parallel with the main camera because a guide setup that's traditional, you can get a little bit of tilt or angle in the guide scope itself, and then it might look like you're getting perfect guiding in terms of your RMS stats, but because the angle of the two scopes is mismatched ever so slightly, you won't get perfectly round stars. Now, the reason you see folks with longer focal lengths use this more often is because that slight imperfection, you can get away with it at shorter focal lengths, maybe three, four, 500 millimeters. But as you get up closer to a thousand and above, it tends to be more pronounced. So when Sharpstar decided to send me out the SCA 260, I asked if they'd go ahead and send me out one of these as well. Now, some of the other difficulties in setting it up can be the fact that you have to to have the mirror actually catch enough of the photons to fill the sensor, but you also want to make sure that it's not actually blocking the incoming light into the camera sensor. Now, the nice thing that you have here is you do have several adjustments to help you with that. This actually came pretty close right from the factory. Uh, there was just a very thin sliver of a black shadow at the bottom of the frame when I got it. And so what you can do is there's screws on the ring itself and then on the helical focuser, which is really nice and kind of separates this one from some of the more basic models. It has a nice helical focuser to help you achieve focus but you can go ahead and loosen that up and you can not only lift the focuser up down and out but then with this one you can actually adjust how far the mirror goes up and down in the body so it gives you a lot of adjustability and then you get these three prongs that sit on the camera side and then when you put this on it kind of somewhat locks into place and then you have these three thumb screws that are going all the way around that go ahead and tighten and keep it in place. On the telescope side, there are a set of threads and like I said, there are plenty of adapters uh, that come in the box. So I can kind of show you that real quick. As you guys know, we don't really do unboxings on this channel because they're uh, boring and no one cares, but here are six different adapters that it comes with. This is the M54 model, so it's set up to to be able to handle a full frame camera. The SCA 260 does have an 80 millimeter imaging circle, which is massive. So then some additional considerations you have to think of is the fact that you want the path that the light travels to be exactly the same going through to the main sensor as it is going to the sensor right here. And so you want both of those distances and paths to be exactly the same. Now again, you can lift up that body uh, to help you with that. And then of course you can 
can use the thumb screw to raise and lower the camera and then lock it into place and then some fine adjustments with the helical focuser. The big thing you want to do is make sure that you get the main camera in focus first and then once the camera's in focus then you can adjust the guide camera separately and that should make life easy. Once you're able to do that and you're able to get a field full of stars in terms of the entire imaging sensor you can even do this during the day like I did and I did it on trees that were a couple hundred yards away and then it was just a matter of a little bit of fine-tuning to go from getting trees in focus to getting stars but I was a lot closer and I'm glad I took the time to do it during the day. So that's kind of an overview of off-axis guiding and some of the features with Askar specifically. Now, some other things to consider is backspace focus. Now, with this setup, as you can see with the manual here, this is 19.5 millimeters wide, the actual collar itself, and it's saying that it will get you 55 millimeters of backspace focus as long as you have something in between that's 18 millimeters plus the 17.5 from the front of the camera to the recessed sensor. Well, as most of you guys know, the electronic filter wheels, at least the seven by two inch is 20 millimeters. Luckily for me with the reflector, the SCA, you really have about 75 millimeters from the back of the focus till it achieves perfect focus. And then the backspace focus on my gear 90 is actually 63 millimeters and I have an adjustable reducer and flattener. So I was actually okay, but you're really closer to probably 57 millimeters with this setup. So for somebody that had to achieve perfect backspace focus and they've used this, if you can post in the comments how you're able to achieve that or if you just accepted the fact that it was off by about two millimeters it's not going to kill your whole image but in the corners it's going to affect the stars having a little bit of an angle to it other than that i really do like the overall fit and finish of this askar unit like i said it has a helical focuser which not all of them have it does have uh, three different screws to lock it in place and i do like the fact that it has not only an adjustment screw for the ring but for the body itself and then it has a locking screw for the focus and then a locking screw as well for the camera. The overall construction on it is really nice. And like I said, with the six spacers and you know adjustment things that you have with it, you should be set for pretty much any setup. And so overall for the money, I, I would go with this over the base model ZWO. If you were between this and the ZWO L, that one's a little bit more comparable because it does have the focuser and it does have the larger mirror like this one has. But I would overall recommend this. It did a great job. And in terms of what camera to use, because I know that that's a big question for everybody, I was able to get a sense are full of stars with the 290 as well as the 174. I did ultimately decide to go with the 174 just because I want to be able to run two setups so I needed to get another guide camera anyway so I figured I'd kind of go with the gold standard. If you're going to go with the 290 what you'll do is you'll take that spacer off and then you'll remove this little piece that still has the glass cover and you'll put that on like that. You'll likely need to do that to get focused. You'll need that extra distance removed. Um, but looking at the sensor alone, that's really the main difference between these two. The bigger the sensor, the more forgiving it's going to be. So that mirror is just trying to steal some of that incoming light. So the more sensor you have receiving that, the better it's going to be. And when you look at the stats online in terms of the dimensions, the numbers don't sound that different, but when you're looking at it in practicality, and I will take a picture of it and overlay it right now, it visually looks like it's about four times the total area, and it is quite a bit bigger. But having said that, I was able to get stars across the entire sensor of the 290 and able to do some guiding with it. And then with the 220, if you have that, which is the newer version of this, then you'll be in an even better position. I don't have a 120 but i would imagine that would be pretty much pushing it i'm sure you could get away with it but i would definitely consider upgrading uh, so overall it was a fairly painless setup i would start during the day try to get the camera and the off-axis guiding in focus and the nice result for pretty much everybody no matter what your setup is you likely will see an increase in overall guide performance 
and the actual relative result of the guide performance and what the stars look like because again it's on the exact same angle using the exact same light so if your scope's getting on average let's say about 0.7 rms you should see an improvement down to like 0.3 or 0.4 depending on the mount that's typically what i see with stuff like the am5 the eq6r the eq8r and when i look at charts across folks using it online that's usually what you see it basically comes cuts the RMS in half. And the nice thing is, is it's about the same price as a decent guide scope, and it's gonna be a little bit more compact. So it's a little bit more of a hassle to set up, but once you get it dialed in, uh, you know, it should be close as you're adjusting focus and swapping between uh, one setup to another. You might have to do some fine tuning. If it were me and I wanted to have one on both rigs, I would probably just grab two of them for under $200. It's probably worth the lack of headache just to have it permanently set up and good to go. So let me know if there's any questions you have that I missed. This was a quicker video and I just wanted to get this out. I'm still waiting to do the review on the SCA 260. I just need some more clear nights. In the meantime, please do check out Telescope Live. A lot of folks from our Patreon group have went ahead and taken advantage of the 50% off link in the description. And then as a reminder, guys, if you can, for any of these upgrades that you do purchase, please use a Gina Astro. It really does help the channel out and it makes it possible to do more of these videos. So guys, as always, until the next one, clear skies.